Hey guys, Mamie Carson here with OneJoyousSkip.com and today I'm going to be using two stamp sets from Neat and Tangled. One called Fa La, -la, Fa -la Llama and the other one is You're a Treat. So obviously the Fa La Llama is the one with the llama and You're a Treat is the one that has the cute little witch and the little accessories that go with that. And these are at a great price point. I'll have them listed down below so you can pick some up if you want to. And they are so adorable and I couldn't decide which one to use for the card today. So I was like, you know what? Let's just use both of them. <laughs> so I have stamped them down in some Copic Friendly ink because I am going to be using my Copic markers to color everything in here today. And I'm doing some really simple coloring because these images are very simple to color. They don't have like a lot of lines and a lot of different areas for shading and things like that. So they're very simple. They're really good for beginner colorists and I'm not a beginner colorist, I've been coloring for a long time, but I still enjoy coloring in these adorable little stamps. So I'm gonna have the little girl sitting on the llama. So her, she did wasn't in the seated position, she was in a standing position. So I was able to just come in with a dark marker and add some little areas that look like knees. And if you can see how I did that, if you want to rewind it and look at it again, um, it's a nice little tip for changing your stamps to suit what you're trying to do. And um, as you can see now, it looks like her knees are bent. So um, it worked out perfectly. It was my first time trying it. Um, and I'm really happy with the way that turned out. So now she can sit on her llama and, um, you know, ride around on Halloween. <laughs> so anyway, I'm coming in now with um, my grays and my blacks to color in her hat and her little cape. And I'm doing what I normally do where I just go in with my light marker first and map out the areas that I want to be the shadowed areas. And then I go straight in over the top of that with my dark marker and then blend that out moving towards my lighter marker. And then here I'm having to do some tip to tip whereas you take a marker and and just brush it across the tip of another marker if you are missing an in-between color which I was here and so um, it worked out fine just to use it that way and so a tip to tip is another little um, thing you can do, strategy you can do when you don't have uh, the color that you're looking for and there's too big of a jump between one marker and the other marker. And so I thought there was a little bit too much black going on here so I wanted to just color in this kitty cat more of a dark gray because I feel like whenever I color critters all black, I really lose their facial expressions. So I was like, well, let me just color him a dark gray and I think it works out just fine. Now I know cats are supposed to be black around Halloween, but um, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> So now I'm coming in to color my llama and I really wanted for her or him, whatever, to be a white color. And But I got a little heavy handed here with my W's and she turned out a little bit darker than I wanted. But it doesn't matter. It's, she still turned out cute. But you know, this can happen sometimes and you just roll with it. It's not that big of a deal. And so just like I do with my other images, I map everything out with my lightest color. Then I go over the top of that with my dark color and then pull that color out with my lighter colors working my way down. I usually use three markers total, especially for these smaller images. Sometimes I'll only even use two, but for these larger, um, like the llama itself, I used uh, three because there's more surface to, to cover. But in small images, sometimes I'll just use two. It just really depends because if you use too much alcohol marker, you can easily blend um, bleed out of the line and you really don't want that to happen. So just be wary of that. And I am using my Nina Solar White cardstock to color these images in. So I'm just finishing up here with my llama skin and I'm going to use some greens and some purples. Just kind of, this llama is like perfect for Christmas. I think that, well, it's called Fa La Llama, so it's supposed to be for Christmas time, but um, I just changed it into a Halloween llama. It's still cold during um, uh, Halloween, so it works out fine that the llama would be wearing a scarf. So I'm just going to do it in some greens and some purples. And here, um, since I don't really 
since I know exactly where I want my shadows to be, I just start out with my dark marker instead of mapping anything out with my light marker. If it's an easy, small area, I don't usually need to map it out with my light marker first. And if it's if it's a small area, like I said, you do not want to oversaturate the paper because then it will leak outside the lines and you'll just mess up everything that you've worked on. So in these smaller areas, just I just go ahead and start with my dark marker, work my way out to my light marker, and it works and blends just fine. With Copic markers, it's more like the more saturated your paper is, the easier the markers will blend. But once you start oversaturating, that's when you start to get a mess. So now I'm just finishing up the little accessories in the moon. And then I did come in later on with a little bit of a yellow marker to go back over that moon because it was a little too gray. Now I'm working on my skin tone here on my little witch and I'm just starting in the shadowed areas with my dark marker, blending that out, very simple. This stamp set is so cute, but well, both of these stamp sets are so cute and the price point, you cannot beat the price point on these smaller, neat and tangled and, and you get so much. You get a sentiment, at least one sentiment. Um, sometimes you get some little extra little words too. And, um, you know, you have like little accessories that come with the stamp set and then you have like your focal point and it's really great. It's perfect for card making because it's a perfect size and then you can add, like we're going to do in this card today, you can add other things to really bring that card, step that card up, step your design up and that's what we're going to be working on today. It's going to be really, really fun. So I did cut all those out with my brother Scan and Cut. And now I'm going to be working on a little background here, and I'm using some of my Distress Oxide inks. And I just got this color, and it's Spice Marmalade, I believe. And so I'm just taking my blending tool here. I showed you I'm using my, uh, my new stencil that I just got and I showed in a previous haul video, and it's called Watercolor Stripe Stencil. I really, really, really love this stencil. I love stripes, and I, and I like the organic look of the watercolor strokes, though like, it looks like brush strokes. And so I'm really, really happy with this stencil. And now I'm coming in with a little die cut oval here that has some of the wonky kind of stitching around it. And I'm just kind of creating not necessarily like a galaxy background, but a sort of a galaxy background. It's going to be more like a night sky with some different colors in the background. So even though right now it looks like I've got some really bright colors going on, I do go over everything and darken it up. And that will give me more of a night sky look instead of like a you know, the galaxy look, which I wasn't going for. And so I guess go here at the end with my black soot, kind of go around the whole thing, push those colors to the back, but you can still see them, you know, a, a little bit, trying to leave it a little bit lighter there in the middle too. And then I'm just using the regular black to go around um, the bottom area here for the ground. And I think that's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to add some stars. And I'm just using a little bit of white paint. And I'm going to get that a little bit wet here so that it will splash pretty good. Just taking a paintbrush and just flicking that all over and get a whole bunch of little stars. And I also took my white gel pen. I can't remember if I showed it on here or not. I took my white gel pen and added some little stars on over the top as well. Now is for the fun part. I'm taking a little bit of um, tear tape in the like, I think it's a fourth of an inch. It's really thin. It's like the thinnest that it comes. And I'm going across the middle of each of those stripes because I'm going to do something really fun with the foils that I just got from the October stamp, uh, card kit from Simon Says Stamp. It's the Gina K Fancy Foils. And I'm using this orange one that has like stars on it. It's really, really, really pretty up close. And um, with that double-sided tape, you just release the backing paper and you put that foil right on top and you pull the foil off and you have some really cool foiling. Doesn't that look awesome? I just love the way that turned out. And now I am just cutting a hole in the center. I'm going to use that, make sure I use that center piece for another project. And I'm going to pop this little guy up with some 3M foam tape. Oh, 
release all that backing paper. And I'm placing that down on my card base. And now I'm going to put in that night sky background that I made earlier. And I'm going to use some Nouveau glue here to adhere that. And you want to make sure you get that glue around the edges so that it doesn't kind of stick up because you really want to be able to see that dimension. Oh, I, can't, I left it in here. So I did, I put in some little stars with my white gel pen as well. And I'm going to put some little highlights here and there. And I did leave a border on all of these cutouts. I just felt like it would it would stand out a lot better against this dark background. Sometimes if you're like this little girl, she has that black cape on and a black hat, it would probably really disappear with that background. So leaving the little white border around it really helps make everything pop and keep it from blending in too much with the background. And I'm just using some more of that glue and popping my little girl right on top of the llama. And sticking on the last of the little accessories here. And um, before it gets too late, at the end I'm going to have some really cute uh, still shots of the card video. But I also have a shout out for an Instagram gal that I really, really like. So make sure that you check her out at the end of the video. Because I am doing shout outs now on some of my card videos as long as I have enough time to do that towards the end. And I did have a little bit of time. So make sure that you check her out and give her some love and go check her out on Instagram. She's really, really great. So my final thing I'm working on here is just doing some heat embossing with the sentiment that comes in the stamp set. I'm just white heat embossing that on some vellum. Heating up the back first so that the um, powder doesn't fly all over the place. I'm going to cut that out. I'm just going to wrap that around the front of the card here. Putting a little bit of glue. I usually, I had already put, I always do this, I had already put the card, I mean the um, panel down on the cardstock so I couldn't lift it back up so I had to glue it down which I don't love to do because it really stands out you can kind of see through that vellum but honestly you couldn't really see through it at all so that worked out really well and then finally I'm just coloring in my little spider here adding some glitter all over everything of course you know it's getting to be the season to pull out all of our glitter pens so but yeah, this is how it turned out, and I was really, really happy with it. So like I said, here are the still shots. Please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. It really, really helps me out, you guys, so much. And I appreciate you guys coming by and giving me love all the time. And all of your comments and requests, I really appreciate it. So here it is, um, Elaine Louise with Pink Peppermint Cards. This is her, um, she has a YouTube channel, and she also has an Instagram and she's from the UK. She has a really, really sweet voice. And she does videos, like I said, on YouTube. And I really just love her voice. So you guys have to go check her out. She's a hustler. She's a great colorist, a great card maker. So make sure to go check her out, you guys. And thank you so much for stopping by. And I hope to have a video out really, really soon, maybe next week. And I'll see you next time. Bye.